Hello, so I'm Deborah Francis-White. Uh, I used to be a Jehovah's Witness. Um, ironically, this event is starting a little late this evening because I couldn't find the right door to knock on. <laughs> Part of practice gang. Haven't been, haven't been in the game for a long time. Um, so, how many people here tonight are here because they used to be Jehovah's Witnesses? Just as a show of hands. Oh, lots of you. Look, it's, oh, it's like a... Oh, and I'll hear from Brother Graham there. Um, <laughs> that's a little bit of Jehovah's Witness humour. If, if you're not one of us, you'll never understand it. Never. Um, <laughs> Uh, at this point, someone would come along with a microphone, and then Graham would repeat something he just heard out of the watchtower, but he'd have to put it into his own words so that we knew he'd really understood it, and, and that, which is a, a, a beautiful brainwashing technique. And I, as a teenage girl, because my parents became Jehovah's Witnesses when I was 14, presumably because they thought adolescence was an ideal time to join a mind-controlling cult. And it turns out it is. Your brain is very plastic. It's a great time to get into heavy metal or ketamine or... Jesus, um, and as as it was, I got into I got into Jehovah, and uh, but I was I'd been funny at school, and I'd always done sort of comedy debating and things and comedy improvisation, and uh, so I wasn't I had to stop doing all of that because Jehovah's Witnesses can't do extracurricular stuff; it's really frowned upon. You don't get to, you wouldn't get disfellowshipped, you wouldn't get shunned for it because we have a, a heavy, enjoyable practice of shunning, um, where your shunning is where you're cut off from your family uh, entirely and uh, all your close friends. But you wouldn't be shunned for it, but it would be frowned upon, wouldn't it? Jehovah's Witnesses, yeah, former Jehovah's Witnesses, frowned upon. Um, so I couldn't do anything extracurricular anymore, so I couldn't be funny. So when the microphone would come around, when you were allowed to answer at the Watchtower, I used to have two metrics for success every Sunday at the Watchtower. One, how many times can I get called upon? Two, how many laughs can I get? And uh, so that's why I learned to do comedy, really. I learned to do stand-up, uh, sitting at my local congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses. And then uh, women aren't allowed to speak on the platform, so this is a real no-no, what's happening now, and I'm really enjoying it. Because um, this is a, it's a little pew-like here, isn't it? Um, and uh, but you are allowed to do little plays, little playlets. Um, and this is on, a, this is on a, a midweek meeting, and that meeting is to learn to go and knock on the doors. That's right, we're taught to do that. Um, there's an education program around that. It's not great, I'll be honest, gang, and that's why you've never let us in. <laughs> but, I mean, if it were any good, let's be clear, more of you would have done, done more than just go, no thanks, I'm not interested, and shut the door in someone's face. But um, there, was, there is a program, and women are not allowed to speak directly to the congregation because pff, religion. Um, but we were allowed to do little playlets and uh, to demonstrate we knew what we were doing at the doors and we'd be given a theme and some scriptures and uh, then we'd write a little play. And so I used to think, right, how many plays can I get to do? How many laughs can I get? And I used to write little plays that were funny and um, what I found is that Jehovah's Witnesses found nothing in this world more hysterical than taking the piss out of the born-again Christians. <laughs> so I would have some kind of born-again Christian, there was a lot in my territory, basically, and so uh, I'd have a born-again Christian open the door, and, and, uh, and then uh, I would ask them questions in a Socratic manner, and show them scriptures and get, ask them to interpret the scriptures until they had talked themselves into my corner. And this would go down hysterically well, so much so that I was asked to demonstrate this um, at a Jehovah's Witness Stadium uh, conference. You know, we, we do these sort of big, uh, they're called assemblies or uh, conventions, um, where we, we take over a whole football stadium. This may have happened to you if you're, if you're not a Jehovah's Witness. Who's not a Jehovah's Witness? Yeah, oh, not, I mean, not now, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's never been a Jehovah's Witness? Who's never, ever been a Jehovah's Witness? Um, so, but you, who, of those people who've seen a stadium being taken over... By usually football fans, but then suddenly it's just people in ill-fitting suits <laughs> and very frumpy. You're always basically, as a, as a woman, you're constantly told to frump up. <laughs> I was always being taken into the back room and told that what I was wearing was not sufficiently dowdy. Um, um, so at these conventions, they sometimes let women do little plays. Um, to, and I was chosen because mine were funny and everything else was so incredibly fucking boring and I was given a chance to do comedy in a stadium so think of me as a Michael McIntyre in reverse <laughs> the Benjamin Button of the Dawn French world now, uh, if you don't know who Jehovah's Witnesses are by the way, if you're not a Jehovah's Witness uh, why are you here? Uh, what, are you, who's just a big fan of apostasy? <laughs> big fan of apostasy? Rick, some high five. And of those people, are you apostates of your own religion? Put your hand up if you are an apostate. Ooh. No? Okay, so, some, so most of you, 
You, sir, you're a fan of apostasy, but not an apostate. <laughs> a niche audience member. <laughs> Could you just tell me, what's your name? Daniel. Daniel, Daniel why, why, how come you're a fan of apostasy? Uh, I've been working with the BHA. I was the president of the society last year. What's the BHA? The British Institute. Oh, <laughs> oh okay, fine. fine, fine. Um, My friend Shappy's the, the uh, president yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Could have got her. Daniel, tell me more. The rest of you, to be honest, the rest of you can go. <laughs> Daniel and I are just going to have a, a pleasant romantic evening while he tells me how brave I am. Um, if you can't see Daniel, he's quite handsome. Uh, anybody else? Who else is here? Who's just a general, general fan of cults? Fan of cults? We have a fan of, fan of cults or talking about cults. Don't, you don't have to be, I don't mean you have to be pro-cult, uh, but are interested in cults. Lovely. Uh, anybody else? Just shout out while you're here. What, one, two, three? Sorry, what was that? An extreme atheist. Great, sort of, that sounds like extreme sports. It's just, yeah, you, you prefer, you're an atheist while jumping off something. Um, great, anybody else? Just so we get a sense of the room and who we're talking to. Um, if you were a Jehovah's Witness, uh, put up your hands if you've been out for over five years, over 10 years, um, over 15 years. Okay, under five years. Oh, wow, there's a whole row there of newbies. High five. High, High five, five to that gallery there. Excellent. So you're quite recent. Anybody, anybody around the one or two year mark? Oh, wow. Wow, you really are. You should really be at a meeting tonight. <laughs> this is outrageous behavior on your behalf. This is ex some exciting stuff. Yeah, yeah. And if, I, did you leave together, you guys? Or did you, you found each other. Did you find each other on the internet? Yeah, see, when I left, the internet was just sort of some pornography and directions to a shop. It wasn't, it, it wasn't, it wasn't what it is today. You couldn't just find people. So I just had to sort of wake up on my own very, very, very slowly over a period of, of years until I went, oh, no. Um, and uh, then later I discovered, not, not, not that much longer. I mean, the internet was a thing, but it wasn't, we didn't have it in our pockets all of the time. Um, it wasn't the, the, the obsession it is now. So the internet is a great thing. I mean, it's a terrible thing, obviously, but uh, it's a great thing for this kind of thing where you can find some community and people who understand. Um, so if you don't know very much about Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, it's essentially a doomsday cult. Uh, now, I use the word cult uh, very freely, liberally, happily. Uh, I enjoy using it, I'll be honest with you. Uh, sometimes if I'm on the radio, they say, you can't say it's a cult, and I go... I will, though, and <laughs> I'll tell you why. Um, <clears throat> I think a useful definition of a cult is any group that won't let you leave with your dignity intact. And they will not let you leave with your dignity intact. The, the thing that makes... Now, in lots of ways, it could be mistaken for a, just an ordinary, fairly harmless family religion. Like, I would say the Anglican Church is largely a cake-based faith. <laughs> I used to be Church of England before we became Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, I was raised in Australia, but we were, we were still the Church of England. Um, and uh, because it, Britain's very good at exporting its product. Um, and it was very cake-based. Based. It was sort of fates, bring a cake. Uh, Sunday, sing some songs, hear a sermon about basically being good or you know, not being jealous or something, have some cake. And other than that, do what you like. I mean, don't go on about it, but have some more cake instead of going on about it. Um, and so, while I, I'm not a fan of any religion, really, um, that seems to me to be a use, a, a, an, an all right way to pass your time if you're not hurting anybody else. If that's what you want to do. I've no interest in sort of um, really undermining anyone's faith. But the reason I think that Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult is because there are two rules. One, no friends outside this organisation. Two, punishment for th even thinking in a different way from the half a dozen old men in Brooklyn who make all the decisions is to be shunned by all those within the organisation. And where does that leave you then? Alone. It is a cult. And that is the definition of a cult for me. Um, they don't actually make you drink Kool-Aid, but that's not the point. If they did, you would. And that's my problem with it. Um, I, wouldn't, I, I would happily have died for it. 
Um, we were constantly told there was going to be a persecution coming and we should get ready and steal ourselves because if we were tortured, we'd have to stand up and not... We couldn't say... It, it wasn't like, just say what you need to say to stay alive and Jehovah will understand. It would be, keep saying the same thing no matter how much they torture you because you're betraying Jehovah's trust if you don't and you must never say anything except, you know, I love Jehovah. And you couldn't really be strategic about it. Um, so we were all prepared to die for it and constantly reminded that we'd probably have to. Um, and, or at least be tortured for it. So it, it felt to me like I was constantly being schooled in, in, a, in an extreme loyalty. Um, and when I woke up, I was really, I think, when I fully woke up, um, and I left, please bear in mind, I left in the 90s, and I fully woke up last year, um, <clears throat> when I went to help another Jehovah's Witness out um, in Canada, and I realised how umbilically connected I was to it. Um, I had an extraordinary experience with some hallucinogenic drugs and then being locked in the back room of a kingdom hall while some elders interrogated me. And if you experience that in 48 hours, you will have a second awakening. I guarantee you. Um, so uh, that's, sort of my, that's sort of my roundup. Uh, it's, it's, uh, if you, very briefly, they're the ones that knock on your door. The watch chat, the, the, if, if anyone's not clear on that. Uh, not the Mormons. Uh, the Mormons knock on your door in, in sort of sort of like uniforms with badges, and they only have to do that for two years, and in exchange, the Mormon church will pay for their university. We have to knock on doors forever, and you're not allowed to go to university. So that's the main, main difference between those two groups. Now, if you, if you have to go into either of those, and you know, if it's, if it's a lottery of birth, definitely pick Mormons, because you, you, know, you can be a doctor you know, uh, after a couple of years of, um, of, of, uh, of, of riding bicycles around. Um, uh, they, I, I became a Jehovah's Witness and I was baptised when I was 16, um, I was a minor, um, it was two years before I was allowed to vote um, or drink, I was allowed to be baptised into this organisation, as it turned out that was a moot point because Jehovah's Witnesses are not allowed to vote or drink too much anyway. Um, here are some other things Jehovah's Witnesses are not allowed to do, um, buy lottery tickets, have beards, have oral sex, even if it's your birthday. <laughs> Birthdays, <laughs> Christmas, anal sex, even if you're gay, being gay, <laughs> and yoga. And I know what you're thinking, why no yoga? It's because your mind will go blank and the demons will get in. <laughs> now, I'd like to introduce you to our wonderful panel. Um, and as I introduce them, I'm going to sort of guess, because I don't know them, I'm going to guess what sort of Jehovah's Witness they were by looking at them. Um, so, uh, here we have Nick. I'm going to say, I think Nick wasn't an elder, but he was a ministerial servant. Um, he, he, has a, he has the vibe of, he wasn't, a, he wasn't a best Jehovah's Witness, but he tried hard and he got a sort of merit badge. <laughs> <laughs> so, elders are the ones that run everything and really do run your life very significantly. Ministerial servants sort of get to help them. They get, to, they get roles that look important, but really aren't. Um, so, I'm going to say he was a ministerial servant, never got trapped to the top of the tree. Uh, but he wasn't, he wasn't naughty, he wasn't up the back either. Is that correct? Not quite. We, hold on, you're an elder. I wasn't. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to say that in that case, you weren't a very good elder. Um, obviously not. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was right, I knew it all along. Um, uh, how long were you an elder for? Uh, about eight or nine years. Eight or nine years, so you'll yeah. have lots of, lots of uh, lots beans of to spill. Stories, yeah. um, this is uh, Terry. Now, Terry um, was nothing because she's a woman. <laughs> um, nothing. What she was was in subjection to men. Uh, she did as she was told. Uh, she was allowed no responsibility, no voice, no originality, uh, no thinking for herself. I was allowed to clean the toilets. Were you? Well done, you. Was that? Were you on cleaning? Were you on cleaning duty? Yeah, even at the conventions, I could clean toilets. Were you? <laughs> I suspect you might have been a pioneer. I was a pioneer. Oh, hey. <laughs> Come on. So a pioneer is somebody who, most Jehovah's Witnesses just knock on the doors on the weekends, they do sort of three hours on a Saturday morning and fuck off home. But Terry and I, we were pioneers, we were extra good Jehovah's Witnesses, so we signed up to do it full time. Oh, sorry, am I allowed to say things like funk? Yeah, am I? Sure, okay. No one's going to get upset by that. Okay, sorry, I just suddenly realised I'm being recorded, but I'm used to comedy where you can just sort of say anything. Um, but I'm happy to censor, I'm used to radio. Um, so, 
Uh, yes, so we pioneered. Pioneering is knocking on doors full time, and then you work in a shop part time to support yourself, which means you are so broke. And can I assure you that the vow of poverty is worse than the vow of chastity? Um, so, uh, some days. So, uh, you pioneered. Yeah. How long for? Um, uh, about two years, three years, something like that. And how long before you left? Were you, were you pioneering when you left, or did you? I was, yeah, yeah. I put in a full 90 hour field service report before I left. <gasps> a month before. Sister. Wow. <laughs> wow. I hadn't been out to the doors for two years when I left. Uh, I'd been, I mean, I went out the odd time, like twice. Um, I was really was sort of phoning it in towards the end. Well, you, went, you went from 90 hours, you put the field service report in, yeah. went home, yeah. changed the locks. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I cannot wait to hear about that. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Lydia. Lydia. Oh. oh. <laughs> I mean, you could be, uh, I, mean, I don't know, you could, you could, I mean, look at where you're sitting, you're very, you could be in a, you could have been a second OC's wife, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just, that's serious shit. Um, could have, you could have been married to an elder, I think. You could have been, you could, were you married to an elder? No. Were you married at all? No, okay. Um, so, were you pioneering then? You should have been if you weren't married. Yes, you were single <laughs> and you had no responsibilities. What, what were you doing not pioneering? So, you, I, I, you yeah, were pioneering. Not... You're auxiliary. Oh, I nearly <laughs> said, <laughs> I nearly said <laughs> auxiliary <laughs> pioneer. I'm sorry I didn't trust my instincts now. Um, Great, so you're in the loop, you? How long were you, did you, were you, did you fade or did you, oh, no. you no, left? Blaze of Glory. Blaze of Glory. <laughs> I, so you're currently disfellowshipped? Yes. You're in a disfellowship state? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I faded. Um, I just, I stopped going and they forgot to disfellowship me. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, and this, this is a couple. Um, now, Mark and Cora, this is a couple. These, oh. these lovely people are a couple, Mark and Cora. Um, I suspect you were an elder. No? No. You were not? No, I was were, never an elder. Did you, were you a sort of, were you a, well, you must have, yeah, I don't think you left that recently. I think you left quite recently. Yeah, you yeah. left quite recently. Yeah. And you were a couple when you were in. Yeah. Were you a married couple? <gasps> I know why you got disfellowshipped. Why? Because you slept together. No. Oh. <laughs> well, we did, but after we were married. Yeah. You slept together after you were married? Yes. That's allowed. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's allowed in most religions. <laughs> Even the Jehovah's Witnesses don't stop you doing that today. <laughs> oh, I bet we were disfellowshipped before getting married. You were disfellowship before getting married? No, no before, before getting, getting married. Before getting married? Oh, yeah. one of you was divorced. No, no yeah, divorced. we were both divorced. Well, why were you disfellowship then? Because you told me. <laughs> we still don't know. You because didn't... we were told to stay away from each other and we yeah. went against... We, we were actually disfellowship because we, we didn't, didn't take the counsel, counsel, which was to stay away from each other. Mm. Why did they want you to stay away from each other when <clears> you, were, you were both free to marry? I don't know. Yeah, it's, there's, it's some, some congregations are really mm. corrupt. Um, <laughs> yes. All right, so uh, that's our introduction. Um, so would you like to hear from our panel? Yes, okay, so.